The origins of the Freemasons are mysterious, with many stories written and spoken both true and imaginary. There are strong ideological links between the Freemasons and the ancient world, links that are strengthened by a Masonic respect for the histories of ancient societies. Many believe that the roots of Freemasonry lie in the formation of craft guilds in the British Isles during the Middle Ages. These guilds instructed and regulated their workers while providing a location called the Lodge that provided camaraderie and support. The guilds were a place to share secrets of the trade and to encourage skill development. Symbolically, Modern masons look to this link with craft guilds and stone masons to represent the strength and necessary work ethic within the fraternity. They use professional guild terms to refer to a fellow mason's masonic degree, such as apprentice, master, and warden. Contemporary masonry dates the beginning of speculative Freemasonry to the year 1717 and the formation of the first documented Grand Lodge in England. Freemasonry came to the North American colonies from England in the early 18th century. In Pennsylvania, the Freemasons met in several buildings prior to the present Masonic Temple. Only two of the meeting places remain. The Free Quaker Meeting House at Fifth and Arch Streets, and the Pennsylvania State House, now known as Independence Hall. Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey were the first Masonic districts acknowledged by the Grand Lodge in England. In 1730, the young Benjamin Franklin wrote in his Pennsylvania Gazette that there were several lodges in the Philadelphia area. Most likely, he included St. John's Lodge in the reference, which went on to become the first Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. Franklin himself became a Mason in 1731 when he met the then minimum age requirement of 25. He rose quickly through the Masonic ranks and by 1734 he became Grand Master Mason of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania and published the first Masonic text in America, a reprint of the Masonic Constitution that was being used at the time. In 18th century Philadelphia, Freemasonry was an important building block in creating the civic institutions that went into the shaping of the city of independence. George Washington, a Freemason and the first president of the United States, saw his Masonic membership as part of a range of necessary duties expected from a man of his social status and political influence. In addition to Franklin and Washington, nine of 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence were known to be Masons, and 13 of the 39 who signed the United States Constitution were also Masons. These Founding Fathers' central Masonic values of fraternity and the united search for wisdom, brotherhood, and charity left an imprint on our country and helped shape modern American Freemasonry. This legacy is reflected in the fact that 15 of the next 44 presidents were Masons. Freemasons stress four basic principles at the core of a Masonic code of conduct. Values that are reflected in Masonic imagery, symbolism, and ritual. First, Masons must believe in a supreme being. Second, Masons adhere to the idea of self-betterment 
of good men becoming better. Third, the Masons take seriously their obligations as citizens and stress the importance of their country's welfare. And last, Masons emphasize private virtues, including temperance and restraint. Central to Masonic imagery is the art and visual language of architecture and its counterparts, science and geometry. Architecture for the Masons represents a link to the past, to ancient civilizations, and to its own roots in stone masonry. Many of the Masonic symbols that link the fraternity to its roots in stone masonry could be seen here in the Masonic Temple. Though the Masons do not subscribe to a single doctrine, the symbol of the square and compass, the main tools of geometry, remind Masons to square their actions by the square of virtue and circumscribe their desires and keep their passions within due bounds toward all mankind. An ancient and much used symbol, the all-seeing eye surrounded by rays of light reminds us that the eye sees beyond all into the depths of the individual and rewards men on the basis of faithfulness and merit. All Masons wear an apron upon entering a Masonic Lodge. These aprons recall the protective garments worn by the original stonemasons during their work. Constructed of lambskin or white leather, the Masonic apron has come to represent innocence and is the initial gift of the Lodge to the candidate. The Philadelphia Masonic Temple, standing on the corner of Broad and Filbert Streets, is a national historic landmark and a cornerstone in American Freemasonry. Dedicated in 1873, the completed temple houses the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania, as well as the Masonic Library and Museum. The temple, built in the Norman Romanesque architectural style, demonstrates the importance of architecture and skilled workmanship to the Masons through its magnificent structure and decoration. In 1867, a committee of Freemasons invited five prestigious architectural firms to submit proposals for the anticipated temple. From the pool of architects, James Hamilton Windrum's proposal was unanimously selected. Windrum, a Philadelphia Freemason, was only 27 at the time. After completing the Masonic Temple, he went on to design the Academy of Natural Sciences and to work as the supervising architect on the United States Treasury in Washington, D.C. Construction of the Masonic Temple began in the spring of 1868, and on June 24, 1868, the day of the Feast of St. John the Baptist, one of the two patron saints of Masonry, over 10,000 people gathered on North Broad Street on a perfect early summer day to commemorate the laying of the cornerstone. The celebration was described as solemn and imposing, filled with ritual and regalia. The Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania aimed to construct a temple that would be unsurpassed throughout the ages. The Masonic Temple was one of the largest and grandest buildings constructed in Philadelphia. And, for a time, prior to the completion of City Hall, it was the tallest building in the city. The construction took six years, with a total cost not including decoration or furniture, of just under a million and a half dollars, a staggering sum for the time. On September 26th, 1873, the Masons began several days of festivities to celebrate the dedication of the temple.
In October of 1887, the Art Association of the Masonic Temple was formed to decorate the various halls of the Masonic Temple to fill them with artistic, historic, and Masonic beauty with statuary, painting, and other works of art. Philadelphia decorative painter George Herzog, a Mason, was hired to transform the lodge rooms into timeless examples of craftsmanship and artistry. Herzog, a native of Munich, Germany, was responsible for the design of 80% of the interior embellishment of the Masonic Temple. He employed 25 painters and specialized in ceiling and wall decorations, as well as high-class interior decorative painting. The Philadelphia Temple houses seven distinct lodge rooms referred to as halls, each with its own significant style. Painted primarily by Herzog, these rooms reference architectural history from Egypt, Greece, Italy, Germany, Spain, and France. Herzog's remarkable talent is seen in the first project he completed for the Philadelphia Temple. Egyptian Hall, begun in 1888 and finished in 1889. Decorated in the style of the Nile Valley, Egyptian Hall houses 12 columns standing on all four sides of the room. The wall paintings are scenes from Egyptian mythology and religion. The furniture of the hall is also in the Egyptian style. The worshipful master's throne and lectern are made of ebony and bordered by sphinxes. Corinthian Hall, finished 15 years after Egyptian Hall in 1903, represents classical Grecian architecture. The hall is filled with dramatic Corinthian columns modeled after originals found in the monument of Lysicrates in Athens, Greece. Ornately painted friezes above the columns show historical fragments from Greek mythology relating mostly to spiritual life. In grandeur and in content, Corinthian Hall embodies the majesty of a Greek temple. The Philadelphia Temple is one of the largest Masonic temples in the world. Its structure, decoration, and continuing preservation reflect the values of the Freemasons. Underscoring Freemasons' unique place in Philadelphia and American history, the temple remains one of the most important buildings in the city. Thank you for taking the time to visit this National Historic Landmark.